Hey guys, I'm John. Today we're here at the Mishimoto Garage to install the Mishimoto Performance Frontline Intercooler Kit on our 2015 Subaru WRX. For more Subaru content, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're looking to push the limits with your 2015 WRX, now is a great time to upgrade to the Mishimoto Performance Air Intake and Mishimoto Performance Stainless Steel Downpipe. Let's get started on the install. Tools needed for install include 2.5 mm Allen key, 6, 7, 8, 10, and 12 mm quarter drive deep sockets, 6 and 12 inch quarter drive extensions, quarter drive ratchet, 12 and 14 mm 3 8 drive deep sockets, short and 6 inch 3 8 drive extensions, 3 8 drive ratchet, 10, 12, and 13 mm ratchet wrenches, dikes, Phillips and flathead screwdrivers, angled needle nose pliers, needle nose pliers, and a pop clip tool. Install time is about five hours, and install difficulty is a four out of five. To start, remove the stock air intake duct. There are two pop clips holding it in place. Remove the engine cover. There are two pop clips holding it in place. Once you remove those pop clips, you might have to pull a little bit hard in order to actually remove the cover. Using a 10 mm socket, remove the two 10 mm fan shroud bolts from the passenger side fan. Before removing the entire shroud, make sure to unplug the fan shroud plug connections. Using a flathead screwdriver, loosen the worm gear clamp that connects the charge pipe to the intercooler. Remove the worm gear clamp and set the vent hose out of the way. We used a flathead screwdriver to remove the worm gear clamp. This WRX is equipped with the Mishimoto baffled oil catch can system, so the vent hose has a worm gear clamp instead of the stock spring clamp. If you are running the stock hose, you'll want to use some needle nose pliers to remove the stock spring clamp. Remove the vacuum hose right next to the vent hose you just removed. Next, remove the two 12 mm bolts that hold the charge pipe to the turbo. Using an 8 mm socket, loosen the charge pipe clamp on the bypass valve. Below the clamp you just loosened, remove that second clamp using needle nose pliers. Disconnect the small hose from the bypass valve. Next, pull the entire charge pipe up and out of the engine bay. Next, we want to remove the vacuum hose that routes near the intercooler. Using a flathead screwdriver, loosen the clamp that connects the throttle body coupler to the intercooler. Next, loosen all three 12 mm bolts that hold the bracket to the intercooler. Loosen the 12 mm bolt on the passenger side of the intercooler. Now, you can fully remove the stock intercooler. Go ahead and fully remove the bracket on the passenger side. To make removing the front bumper a little easier, lift your WRX up with a lift or with jack stands. Remove the eight pop clips from the bottom of the front bumper. Next, remove the two pop clips that hold the front bumper to the fender liner on either side. Now, remove the six 10 mm bolts on top of the front bumper. Remove the remaining three pop clips on top of the front bumper. Carefully unclip your front bumper cover and pull outward about 10 inches, ensuring that the fog light connections are not damaged. Next, disconnect the fog lights. Now you're ready to completely remove your front bumper cover. Remove the foam bumper guard from the crash beam. Next, remove the 8 12 mm bolts which hold the crash beam in place. Move the foam air diverters away from the crash beam, but do not fully remove them. Go ahead and remove the crash beam from your WRX. Using six of the 12 mm bolts you removed earlier from your stock crash beam, go ahead and attach the Mishimoto crash beam. Before you fully tighten down the bolts, make sure to adjust the placement of the beam and make sure everything is centered. Attach the Mishimoto intercooler to the crash beam. Thread the two 12 mm bolts by hand so the fitment can be adjusted to your preference. Reposition the foam air diverters around the intercooler. Next, install the Mishimoto bypass valve hose onto your WRX. Using needle nose pliers, 
attach a spring clamp onto the bypass valve hose. Remove the O-ring from the stock charge pipe and install it onto the Mishimoto charge pipe. Once everything is set and ready, install the charge pipe onto the turbo outlet and tighten the two 12mm bolts. You can attempt this from either the bottom or the top of the vehicle. Remove the bypass valve from the stock charge pipe using a flathead screwdriver. This might be a little tough at first, but just keep wiggling. The first port goes to the previously installed small hose that is not under boost. Attach a worm gear clamp to the hose, and then attach the bypass valve to that hose. Fully tighten using a flathead screwdriver. The second port will be under pressure, and will also have a Mishimoto hose installed on the outlet. This hose will be subject to boost. The shorter end goes to the bypass valve, and the longer end will go to the charge pipe. Ensure that the supplied T-bolt clamps are already on the hose. Connect the hose and fully tighten down the clamps using a 10 mm socket. We suggest that you position the T-bolt clamps with the bolts facing towards the outside of your vehicle. Route the Mishimoto bypass vacuum hose around the cylinder head and connect it to the closest port on the block. Route the opposite side towards the bypass valve. Now is the time to install the Mishimoto included silicone crankcase vent hose with the worm gear clamps and the zip tie tree clips. Disconnect the AC compressor clutch connector and undo the wire loom tie down clips. Remove the four 14 mm AC compressor bolts and engine hook. Disconnect the crankcase vent hose under the AC compressor using needle nose pliers. Remove the vent hose pop clips on the intake manifold using a flathead screwdriver. Using needle nose pliers, remove the vent hose from the plastic turbo inlet housing. Install the supplied worm gear clamp to the supplied Mishimoto silicone hose you are about to install. Then, install the side of the hose with a 90 degree bend onto the valve cover port directly below the AC compressor unit. Go ahead and tighten the worm gear clamp with a flathead screwdriver. Route the hose next to the intake manifold and down to the induction housing on the passenger side. Use needle nose pliers if you are having trouble getting the hose onto the port of the induction housing. Go ahead and tighten down the worm gear clamp using a flathead screwdriver. Using the two supplied zip tie tree clips, zip tie the silicone hose to the intake manifold. Cut the loose ends with a pair of dykes. Reinstall the four 14mm bolts that connect the AC compressor to your WRX. Be sure to tighten these down with a torque spec of 35 foot-pounds. Reinstall the wire loom that goes over top of the AC compressor. Clip back in the electrical connection for the AC compressor. Reroute the serpentine belt. Note that the tensioner is a 14 millimeter. Reattach the DIT cover mounting bracket using two 10 millimeter bolts. Using needle nose pliers, reattach the vacuum hose that you removed earlier that was located next to the vent hose. Using a flathead screwdriver, attach a worm gear clamp to the vent hose you removed earlier. This one's for the catch can. Make sure to reattach the hose in its previous location. You might need to use needle nose pliers to help attach the hose onto the port. Next, attach the black vacuum hose to the bypass valve. Remove the one 12 millimeter bolt that holds the horn assembly to the front support. Next, remove the bracket for the intake, starting with the one 12 mm bolt near the Mishimoto intercooler. Then, remove the 10 mm nut on the other side of the bracket. Once all the hardware is removed, go ahead and detach the bracket. Squeeze and remove the pop clip that holds the wire harness for the horn assembly. Thread the one 12 mm bolt from the horn assembly to the back side of the Mishimoto bracket, and install the bracket in the same location as the horn assembly. Connect the other side of the bracket to the intake pipe and tighten it with the one 10 mm nut you removed earlier. Using the supplied 13 mm hex lock nut and 12 mm hex bolt, slide the horn up behind the mount of the vehicle and tighten the bolt. 
Next, find the transition coupler in your kit that goes from two and a quarter inch to two and three quarter. Install the larger end of this transition coupler onto the hot side of the intercooler, and the smaller end of the coupler will face away. Next, find the two and a quarter angled coupler. The short end of this coupler goes onto the charge pipe you've already installed. The long end of the coupler will connect to the short end of the elbow aluminum pipe. The other end of the aluminum pipe will join to the two and a quarter inch coupler attached to the intercooler. Make sure you already have four Mishimoto provided T-bolt clamps on the couplers before you install them. Next, we want to install the angled transition hose that goes from two and a half inch to two and three quarter inch. The two and three quarter inch side attaches to the intercooler and the two and a half inch side will face away and angled down. Route the lower cold side pipe up and through the front of your WRX. This may take a little bit of finesse in order to get the pipe routed properly. Once everything is seated correctly, attach the bottom end of the cold side pipe to the two and a half inch silicone coupler end, which is attached to the intercooler. The Mishimoto baffled oil catch can system is already installed on this WRX. On the battery tie down clamp, Loosen the 10 mm nut that is holding the catch can in place and set the can aside. Make sure to reattach the 10 mm nut right after you remove the catch can. This entire catch can assembly will be relocated. Attach the supplied T-bolt clamps to the intermediate silicone transition coupler and then connect the small end of the coupler to the lower cold side pipe right near the battery. Move the fuel return line out of the way. Install the upper cold side pipe with the largest diameter and tightest bend radius above the fuel lines. It's easiest to have the small coupler which connects the aluminum pipe to the throttle body attached while routing the entire upper cold side system. Once everything is situated and seated correctly, clamp everything down. For the throttle body, there is one warm gear clamp that you'll use a flathead screwdriver for. And for the entire cold side pipe system, there are five 10 millimeter T-bolt clamps. It's easiest to work your way down from the throttle body all the way to the intercooler. Reconnect the fog lights in the front bumper to their harnesses. Reinstall your front bumper cover. You might need a friend to help you out. The bumper cover will snap into place by the headlights. Reinstall the remaining three pop clips on top of the front bumper. Next, Reinstall the six 10 mm bolts on top of your front bumper. Reinstall the two pop clips that hold the front bumper to the fender lining on either side. Remove the two Phillips pop clips on the back panel near the front windshield. There is one on either side of your WRX. Wedge a 6mm socket into the bottom of the tab while prying up on the top of it with a flathead screwdriver. Next, pull up on the engine cover on each side of the engine bay and lift up the entire unit. Remove the 10 mm bolt behind the panel near the front windshield. Replace it with the Mishimoto provided longer 10 mm bolt. Next, push the tabs back into place. Go ahead and push the side panels back into place as well. On the back panel near the front windshield, push the two Phillips pop clips back into place. Using a flathead screwdriver, remove both hoses from the passenger side catch can. Using an Allen key, remove the two 2.5 mm Allen screws on the top of the catch can. Flip the bracket upside down and reattach the two Allen screws. Using one provided 10 mm nut, attach the catch can to the long 10 mm bolt that was attached earlier over by the front windshield. Tighten the bolt on the catch can using a 10 mm wrench. 
the can might be slightly angled, so if you prefer a level catch can, pull up and bend the tab on the bracket. This will help level out the catch can. Route the hose coming from the plastic inlet housing under the intake manifold and towards the out on the catch can. Attach a worm gear clamp to the hose that goes from the plastic inlet housing into the outlet of the catch can. Tighten the clamp using a flathead screwdriver. Route the hose coming from the crankcase port under the intake manifold and towards the in on the catch can. Attach a worm gear clamp and route the hose coming from the crankcase port to the inlet marked in on the catch can. Tighten down the clamp using a flathead screwdriver. Using the four 12 millimeter bolts, reattach the aluminum under tray to your WRX. Reinstall the plastic under tray and attach it to the aluminum under tray. You need to bend the two ears of the plastic under tray in order to allow fitment of the hot and cold side pipes. If you really want to, you could cut these. Reinstall the eight pop clips from the bottom of the front bumper. Reinstall the engine cover using the two pop clips. Next, reinstall your air intake duct. Use the two pop clips you removed earlier. Now that you've installed your Mishimoto front mount intercooler kit on your WRX, make sure that all your clamps are tight and take your Subaru for a test drive. Mishimoto recommends having your car professionally tuned or calibrated after installing this front mount. Don't forget to click subscribe.